And today, as many of you may have noticed, uh, during the uh, week of Channel Partners, we announced that we are offering Fortinet FortiPortal. And uh, we're offering it for free to our Fortinet customers. So Chuck's going to go into a, a lot of detail, well, pretty good amount of detail on what that is, and specifically, you know, why it's a good product and you should consider it. So Chuck, see if you can uh, move the slides and you can take it from here. Sure. Thank you, Ellen. Um, typical with me, welcome from Airspring land. How are we all doing out there? I know it's month end, uh, but I do appreciate uh, you spending an hour with me uh, looking at the wonderful 40 portal. Um, and our agenda today, we're going to look at particular market of firewalling in general, why and a specific feature of firewalling, reporting and logging, why is that important? Why is that becoming critical to today's IT manager uh, and the CFO of companies, so forth? Kind of general market information there. Then we're going to look at 40 Portal, define it, look at its key features, open up the hood. How does it work? You know, underneath the curtain there or behind the curtain, as we say. And then we're going to go down and look at each dashboard that it offers and show an overview of each. I, each one could be its own hour of training, how much detail's in there, but we're gonna keep it at a higher level so you understand what we're gonna be offering as well as where you can use it to help close sales. So with that, Ellen, I'm gonna shoot it back over to you and give us a little firewall reporting why it's critical. Okay, well, those of you who've attended Mike Chase's Cybersecurity Bootcamp are probably aware of all these things we have up here, but we thought it would be good to remind people like, why is firewall reporting critical? Why should you care about this? Why you should you tell your customers they should care about it? And you know, as Mike drives home very often in that boot camp, is you need to develop a security mindset. And we follow that philosophy here at Airspring, but it's obviously more important than ever. But but the management at a company has to be keenly involved with this. It's a fundamental aspect of management that they should be in the evaluation of the behavior, constantly evaluating the behavior of their IT infrastructure. And they have to ensure that their security model is implemented and followed. Now, if they are subject to any compliance regulations, they definitely have to be. Um, I think we moved forward one. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There, Alan. That's okay. Sorry. All right. <laughs> so, you know, it goes without saying that management it creates the policies and alliance controls and does the rules, but if you're not checking on that, what good is it? You know, firewalls are not devices you set, it's not a set it and forget it, and neither is your security policy, because it's a dynamic, always changing environment. There are always new threats, um, always new changes going on in, in this, the, um, the threat landscape that you need to be aware of. And having visibility into, into items that are associated with security brings support to the overall decision-making process. You have to constantly review, reassess, and maybe change your policies. You know, there's many reports generated with unified threat management systems and next generation firewalls. And some, you know, are operational and they're targeted primarily to the technical team, your security, your network staff. But there's others that are more for the managerial teams who have to worry about the effects of the, and, and compliance regulations and the fines and, and other horrible things they'll do to you if you don't you know, keep your organization in compliance. Those are the presidents, the CEOs, the CFOs, some senior VPs. And, and what Chuck will bring up, some of these reports that Forda Portal does and provides are easily consumed by non-technical types of people who need to know what's going on in their organization. So, okay, we'll go to the next one. So regardless of the size and type, you know, these are critical in any environment. Oops, far, sorry. Ellen, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Why does it not hold on? There we go. So, you know, as I said before, the you know, firewalls are a critical part of any company's what they call the defense in depth strategy. And they serve a key role in protecting your network, as many of you know, against malicious actors. And most of them do this quite well. Fortinet does this very well, which is one of the reasons we sell it. But as I said earlier, they're not a for set it and forget it device, and they need constant tending and maintenance. And a lot of organizations need to, need to devote more time to maintaining and fine tuning their security infrastructure. And just turning your firewall on doesn't mean you're protected. So you need to monitor and analyze those firewall logs. These are very, and other reports that come. These are critical network devices and very large companies that are very, very busy can produce 
thousands of log messages every hour. And, and to scroll through those and analyze them is overwhelming. And that's why you've seen tools uh, like Fortinet has brought to the market come into being because it's just overwhelming. So search through, manually search through large log files and establish a chain of event that maybe led up to an incident. You know, because this these logs and these reports establish that baseline. You know, what's typical for your organization? And this way, a security administrator, or maybe even an assist admin, if, he's tra if they're trained, can spot things, unusual behaviors, anomalies on the network, and it might be a sign of malware being introduced or a DDoS attack. And uh, these logs need to be, as I said, just reviewed and summarized poorly. So um, log management can be overwhelming, which is why a lot of people don't do it, or they fall down in it. And you know, if you have Forta Portal, it makes it easier for everybody. So Chuck, I think I made the case for that. Oh, and, no. uh, Great information because we are moving firewalling, security protection is where the CFOs are spending all their money. Yeah. Because we don't know where these people are working from. We don't care as long as they're working, they clocked in, but it has to be secure. So as you, I love the analogy you give there that it is a, a living thing. So you yeah. constantly have to stay up with it. What's it doing? But yeah. Thank what you. is 40 Portal? Thank you, Ellen. Great overview. What is 40 Portal? I, you know me, I like to dig in, read user manuals, operator guides, data sheets, what they're doing in the market, Gardner reports, IDC reports, and all that. And you know, we use the, overuse the word portal. We all log into portals to do our banking, to order groceries, to do whatever. It is a service. For those who sell services in their pitch and elevator pitch, it is a service that provides the customers, our end users, our customers, your customers that you're selling for us, to us, so forth, for centralized reporting, traffic analysis, security management configuration, log retention, without requiring additional hardware and software. So it's a cloud-based service, okay? I love number two here is my favorite. As an engineer, I love 40 Manager and 40 Analyzer. I love getting down to every bit and every byte because that's just who I am. I'm, I'm the one-off sometimes in the room. But to those who aren't very technical, who don't want to know how the spark plug sparks and causes the piston to push down, and just tell me the time, Chuck, not how they made the watch. It's a user-friendly cloud portal that gives you a, as you're going to see here, very non-technical view of what's going on. Into the in-depth 40 analyzer and 40 manager, which is an engineer's delight. I like the analogy that I'm a DOS guy. I can write my own disk operating programs, or I could just be a person who goes and uses Windows, right? That type of thing. And of course, it's a self-service portal for 40 manager access to it. So these came from our wonderful friends at Fortinet. They're different, uh, these lines here I'm using, and they're different uh, documentation and so forth. But it, it's a place that the IT manager could go in, see what's going on with the network, look at the logs and the reports and so forth. Um, as we go forward here, let me click the mouse here. There we go. Some of the key features being offered via 40 Portal through AirSpring and Fortinet, obviously our partner that we're gonna talk about today is dashboard widgets. You're gonna see dashboards and widgets all over the place today. Why? Because it's a very flexible platform that lets the end user, our end users, hey, I really don't care about memory. Show me how many sessions I have. They can move these dashboards widgets around about the system or about the logging or the reporting. Uh, log views with filters. I have two slides on nothing but log views and filters. There's a lot of filters. Drill down analysis to look at everything that happened on that network. When, what, who, what, how, where, that whole thing is there. They logged in at this time, they did this, they went there, all the way down to the bytes and the bits of the protocols and that. Device, policy, and object management. For those of you familiar with firewalls, we build user groups that uses objects that are policy that uses policies and we manage them all with our devices. These are the building blocks of the firewall. So as we're gonna see in here, we'll be able to go in there, modify some of the original configurations if we need to, and look at the configurations as well. Of course, it's all about monitoring. Who's on the network? What are they doing? 
where are they at? When did, you know, all that. We'll look at all different types of monitoring, look at threats, top users, top browsers, top destinations, VPN tunnel stats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all in here. And remember, we've gone international at AirSpring. Big international this year. We're all learning different languages. I'm just kidding. But yet, in 4D Portal, in the reporting, it supports these different languages here because we are doing international networks now. We have networks in South America, Central America, all over Asia, all parts of Europe. They might need a French report in Paris as opposed to a Chinese report in Beijing. That's all in there if you need it. And of course, with AirSpring, part of that managed services, besides updating all that software so the IT manager doesn't have to do it for malware and IPS and UTM, we're doing that. We're also gonna set up during our turn up process, scheduling the reports, what reports, when they're gonna be scheduled, they're gonna be emailed out, off we go. So as you can see, we're adding value to that managed service. Now, I'm gonna bring up the word analytics because things are changing in our environment as we do here. We used to call it logging and reports. Well, that's now called analytics in the fancy world. <laughs> Just what it said. And as well as monitoring, people always wanna know, well, what type of analytics do I get with this portal? So I wanted to throw this slide up here that this is what AirSpring is gonna be offering with the 40 portal with AirSpring, log management, report management, SD-WAN monitoring, uh, across that because that's how we sell the product per se. Under the hood, how does this work, Chuck? Well, 40 Portal is a front end portal for 40 Manager and 40 Analyzer. 40 Manager configures, controls, and manages the security gate, 40 gate, which is the firewall. 40 Analyzer collects logs, analytics, and creates reports. So one manages, one analyzes, and you get both feature sets of these particular servers via the 40 portal. So in our colos, we have 40 Analyzer and 40 Manager, and we also have another server that's 40 portal, you and your customers will be logging into 40 Portal, accessing pre-configured FortiGates. That's all part of our managed service product here at AirSpring to get your reports, your logs, and look at what was configured. So that's how it works underneath the architecture there. Very straightforward. It is all multi-tenant. It is all secure, obviously. So uh, that's a nice slide to talk to customers about. As we look at a self-service portal, 40 portal, it's co-managed code analytics. Remember, our firewall service is co-managed with that end user. Why we like to use that term is because we have such a wide variety of firewall users. We have the one-off mom and pop shop, single node, going up to uh, recent network. We just put in a 400 nodes uh, across, uh, what was it, 21 countries. They're gonna have different requirements and different needs. So that's why we go co-management to meet that, as well as co-analytics or reporting in the logging. You need customization, it's there, let us know, as well as scalability. You can just keep adding, they show up in the portal, off you go. Now, as we look into these dashboards and these different parts of the GUI, they're there for different reasons. And I, I just thought these points here were nice because it just shows you an example of, okay, as you look at these dashboards and you're looking at all this data, hey, Chuck, I come from the voice world. I know I have a call log and a CDR and a CSR. Well, that's the same logging they're doing here in the data firewall world. It's just that we don't look at our call logs going, we just wait for our phone bill in the voice world, right? Well, that's basically your monthly report in the data world is your phone bill, right? If you kind of compare the two. But what they're looking for is abnormalities and maladies. You know, what is it normal? What's a normal day? Monday through Friday, we've seen it, we know it. Then all of a sudden we got extra bandwidth being used or more people trying to log in, you know, these type of things. The operation folks 
is where most people think for next generation firewall, the IT geeks and all those guys like that, you know, how much they're using. Is my main website being accessed if we are hosting it? You know, what's the behavior? You're actually looking at the network as a living thing, how it's being used, what's normal, so that when something abnormal happens, it sticks out. And the most classic sense here is the bottom point here is that there was at 2.30 in the morning where there's nobody in the office, let alone at 2.30 in the morning, we're sending two gig of traffic out. You probably got a bot in there or something like that. You know, this type of thing that you can look at and see it's a security risk or somebody new logged in or we've got a new client overseas or something, right? At least you get that information. This here is the 40 portal main dashboard when the end user logs in it what i'm going to be doing is going down the left side here <laughs> looking at all these different dashboards showing you an overview of what's available in there this first dashboard that comes up there are eight different which uh, eight different screens uh, the, i'm only showing two that cover what i call all the tops now you're going to be hear, hear me say this a lot because top countries, top threats, top sources, top destination, top application, top browsers, top users. There's so many, there's like a whole list of tops, I call them, um, that it looks at to let you know. And this is all customizable by the end user where they can pick to add widgets or take them away. They can look at all their nodes. This is across all their nodes. Or if they wanna do a specific setup per node, that's up to them. They can look at the from the last five minutes to the last year as far as this calendar that pulls down over here. So you get a lot of information. This is the fault of the top countries, top threats, sources, destination, application, and policy hits are your are usually your top default ones there. But inside each one of these, you can pull down and say, on oh, my top countries, I don't want a map, I want a bar graph, or I want a pie chart totally up to each individual user how they want to do that so it's very flexible that way and you'll get admin logins this is my failure here why am i i purposely set up a url so the hackers try to hack it all day long so i generate some negative traffic it's very tough to generate negative traffic with the fortinet around because it shuts everything off and you know moves it around so you can't so if you try to generate like a ddos attack or a dos attack it shut you out automatically but and you also get the resource usage you know how much memory is being used or how many sessions i have that type of thing from the dashboard as we go down the side here you'll see the next one is the device health of this particular fortigate up here is the solutions engineering 40f i have in the lab shows you how long it's been up is it in sync with the 40 manager and the 40 analyzer you know with the manager Ready to sync there? Are the policies and object status, are they all running right? What's your CPU load? How much memory? How many sessions? So this is kind of like your dashboard of your car as you're driving, you know, how much, how many amps you're using if you're driving electric or how much gas you got, how long it's been there for that particular device. As we go down, we go into the SD-WAN section of the 40 portal dashboard if your customer is using the SD-WAN option of the 40 gate, which comes with almost every Airspring one we sell. Um, this here is the flash dashboard, where they're at on the map, what's the device health here, and most of ours are up and running, so I had to find one that wasn't was still being installed. We have a four node network here. Three of them are up, one isn't, and that's why they're uh, unhealthy because they're waiting for the other one to come up. You gotta get them where they're coming up so you get some good information up there. But you can look at all the devices or particular one. And once again, you get the same calendar bar here, how far back you wanna look at. And down here was a quick screenshot of, they were bringing this up. This particular customer actually runs two Atrans behind the FortiGates running four PRIs. And uh, this actually here's, there are two different Atrans down below here sending out the voice in and out. Um, and it's just looking at the latency of those loops, the jitter, that typo, typical stuff that you get with SD-WAN monitoring. But remember, we are international now, so whether that SD-WAN setup be domestically or international, you get the maps, you get all that stuff, looking at a different customer here, 
But in that SD-WAN uh, view and monitoring, you're going to get your what rules we have set up pre-configured with you and your team for that customer, what rules for the SD-WAN, as well as the performance, jitter, latency, packet loss, utilization by application, by role, by link, and then the events on there as well. So as you can see, and then of course you get the bar graph or pie chart, any of these below items that you need. Very thorough. As we move down, I like to say, people say, well, you can do configuration through the 4D portal, which they can, but here at Airspring, to us, it's more of a modification because the way we install the Fortinet, the FortiGate network, is that, our, you know, once again, for those who have done it before, you get with, you know, go through solutions engineering, we get you the right solutions, you go through our order entry process, you get a project coordinator, managed service engineer, Visios are involved, everybody's, we get down, we make sure everything's set up, so we get it right the first time, but we do allow you to modify any policy objects, zones, interfaces, device management features like example under device management, we set up a DHCP server there and we set up for 100 addresses. You want to go in and add another 20. Great. Go ahead and do it. You know, that type of thing. So we're going to let you modify that what we configured. Now, if you do have any big additions, you're putting in new offices and new loops. That's a whole new order goes back through the process. But if you do have any major additions, you still, as you'll see later on, you still get four free changes a month with our process that we have. So this here for the modify is to modify. Here I'm just showing some modifying of some policies below here an object, uh, you know, for a virtual IP that I had in my camera, I'm gonna change that address or something like that. So this also, you know, lets the customer do some modifications that are simple or straightforward but gets us involved in the major ones as well. And that's the kind of way we call that co-managed. Now we get into the monitoring. Now, I'll probably, Ellen, be doing a, doing a monitoring one a couple of months from now because the monitoring side of this product is quite amazing. Um, there's the tops, top sources, threats, destination, applications, browser, websites, VPN domains and that. And as you're monitoring, you come over here and I pull this down and I get all these eight items on the left and I can pick those items like top destinations, then also add a filter to drill down that, okay, everybody who's coming to Chuck's camera from China, how many did I get over the last seven days? That kind of detail, in or out. And here you can see they graph it very nicely. It's really pretty. You can see in this case it's top threats. Down here, um, and Ellen, you know, she was a little at first check, you're being a little bold here. I said, Well, Ellen, this is real stuff now. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Here's a customer of ours that had a top threat. They were using a point-to-point Wi-Fi camera that the Fortigate shut off. That's why it came uncritical. Wouldn't let them use it. So they called me. Why are they shutting off my camera? Because you're gonna that's a Wi-Fi camera. It's a camera on one end that's using wireless to come back to an access point. And that protocol is known for hackers, so we're not going to let it. Oh, okay. And then we also shut off when they were trying to go to some pornography sites, as well as some spam URLs. That's what people are paying for. This is These were all blocked by the FortiGate. Only the proxy HTTP got out because we changed the policy to allow it. And the customer knew that. So. You get into browsing, you're going to see this stuff. You're going to say, oh, look, they're going to pornography site. Well, that's the modern era. FortiGate blocked it. You know, it's there. But you get all these monitoring devices as well as being, oh, let me go back up to monitoring here, sorry, as well being able to filter on that monitoring, it, it really, over the time periods when you need to look, is it, quite amazing. Now, part of monitoring what would happen, monitoring is what's going on live. What happened is the logging. So as we would say in the voice side, trying to do some voice analogies, and we have a lot of voice folks out there, concurrent calls are what's going on right now. Your phone bill is what happened last month. Well, in logging, everything that goes in and out of the FortiGate is logged. Every bit that goes from LAN to WAN or LAN or WAN to LAN 
is logged. Some of these are running at two gig, two gig, 10 gig speeds. It's a lot. But the log view provides you filters and controls these different events that you can look at. Like here, we've got traffic over the last day, intrusion protection, any sandboxing or DMZ, DNS, antivirus, application control, web filtering, or any events. So maybe there's an application we put out. We wanted to see who's using it. We put it, click application control, put on an IP address filter, and see who came there. These are the type of things you can mix and match that can really drill down and be very specific on maybe it's a certain user group that's an SSL that's having an issue logging in. You know, these type of things can be done. Um, as you get down into the logs, as I said, here's the ones we looked at. You're arranging it by application or attacks or DMZ sandboxing or web filters. Once you pick, like, say, traffic, or here I pick traffic, then I can add a filter. Now, there's 51 filters behind each one of these top items. <laughs> so, you know, you the combinations get quite large quite quick, and you can run multiple. So if I want to say, hey, I want to look at the traffic coming from this going to this site with these applications or this service, you can pull that out. And then once you have all that, you can export it to CSV if you need to. And you'll see the export to CSV throughout the portal or copy to clipboard. They make it very easy for the, the folks that are using this to troubleshoot to use. It's very nice for those. And those who just wanna see where the traffic's flowing as well. So you can see the detail that you can get. Well, speaking of detail, Chuck, Let's get down to the bits and bytes. So here I just ran a quick filter log on source IP. I wanted to see who was coming into my camera. This is the endpoint of the destination and the source coming in. I'm only showing you one third of this entire screenshot, by the way, because there's so much, but it basically tells me everything about this packet and the conversation that's going on between this uh, IP address here, that IP address there, and what they were doing, what protocols they were using. And some people would call this like a PCAP, almost like file. And over here, I love this little feature here, the copy to clipboard. Oh, this is the one I want. I can click on that, roads it right to my clipboard. I can take it over to any documents I'm using and dump it in or whatever. So it's, it's very portable like that as well. And then finally, getting into the uh, 40 portal reports. Now, Reporting and the data side is a little bit different than we do on the voice side per se, because on the voice side, it's if you think about it, I pick up a phone and I call you. That's me logging into a terminal and logging to you on as if you were a host. And the reports are going to say this connection were made and they used it, right? And the phone bill, we do it because we bill you. We want you to pay for that connection, right? It's a little different in that respect. But as you can see here, when you go under reports, you can pull up from the last five minutes to specify days or end months. And this pull down window is on almost every GUI I was uh, showing you there earlier from a reporting or a time period capture, whether you're looking at a log or monitoring, or in this case, a report. And these different reports will show up. Now, in 4D Analyzer, there are thousands of reports. <laughs> um, we're we're, we're going to start off with five, and we'll probably be adjusting that because we're learning that different markets are going to require different reports uh, right on here. And this is going to look at the reporting here. What I mean by that is that if we're selling to a school district or a .org organization or a government organization, or even to a lot of the, um, what they call 501C uh, charity organizations, in their firewalling, a lot of times they're required a monthly cyberbullying report. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm a Datacom guy. I went for you know SD-WAN usage and bandwidth and applications over bandwidth. I didn't think about that one because I'm not used. So the nice thing is we have a lot of reporting in there if the customer needs specific reports. We'll find that out during the solutions engineering interview, and we'll make that adjustment. Um, you do have read, modify access to the portal. As I mentioned earlier, you can modify any existing configuration 
Don't worry about it. You still get your four free changes a month per customer. So if you do have anything big going on, you know, get us involved. Let's keep the co-team thing working. It works well, you know, major additions or changes there or whatever. On the reporting side, we are going to be setting up offering five canned reports, depending on the application and the vertical market we're using them in. Um, and then we're going to offer a weekly or monthly. You know, some people want it every week. Some people just want it once a month. That's fine. It's up to them. But something very important here, and I put this up for a purpose, is that we're going to set that up. And when the end user is going to be emailed out to them, but it's going to be an alert. That's going to not alert or just an email notification that says, hey, this report was generated. Here it is. And they're going to click on a URL because that report contains very secure information. I'm not going to attach it to an email and send it out to anybody. I'm going to make them come in and download the report. And that's just security 101 there, folks. It might be inconvenient. I'm going to say I'm sorry. I don't. It's just. Everything about what this network's doing is in this report, and that's a hacker's delight. So we're just not gonna, so they're gonna have to have read access. We don't charge for it, no big deal. Just, you know, they can go in and they can add anybody else that needs to be added to get those reports. But in these reports, you are going to get, as you can see some examples here, this up here in the right corner, that's a report of those two ad trans running PRIs in the SD-WAN. They were showing all the UDPs that were being used for voice calls at that time, coming from one ad trans going through the SD-WAN utilization, then going out the wide area port. That was its graphic display there with a ton of information about how much each application was using over the links and all that type of stuff. It's really nice, you'll like to see it. There are reports in there. There, there are so many to mention, but whether it be bandwidth, whether it be um, uh, security as far as uh, uh, UTM or IPS, those are all given. We'll be giving out a general UTM report, a general uh, bandwidth report, those type of things. Uh, monitoring your threats, policy, hips, and I call them all the tops that's in there. They get to pick which top is their top. And there's well over 20 tops in there, and you'll see what I mean when they get in there. And of course, logs, you got the logs to exports to CSV, log filters, there's 51 to be exact, I counted them, they're in there and they work. And you're able, like here's a typical log layout here, you're able to not only configure what filters you want to filter on, but on the spreadsheet going, or I say the X axis here on the spreadsheet, you can also pick which one of these characters you want, uh, columns you want, you can put your own column tops in there uh, to look at that. Now, I am gonna bring up something, I probably shouldn't, but I am, because I just like to get it out. We are still working with our customers to see how often they want the logs kept. We're, we're getting everything from, oh, I don't care, a week's fine, to this very, very long period. So right now, it's probably gonna be around maybe 10 to 14 days. That might be adjustable. We're still learning that from our customers that are using it. Because once again, we do have a wide variety of customers, folks. And what I mean by that, as I mentioned earlier, from the 1Z, 2Zs all the way up to the 400Zs, and that one shoe isn't going to fit all. So if you do have any specific log requirements, get your channel manager, account managers on the phone with an SE. We'll make sure that's all taken care of. It's just another item to check off on there. Uh, Ellen, that's what I had today. Um, send it back over to you okay well folks now's the time for you to get to ask some questions we did have a writing question on the q a oh, cool. panel now this one is um not the typical question we get so i'll oh. read it to you chuck and see if you can answer john wants to know if he has a customer that is a is a fortinet shop okay they've got fortigate and they're fully managing it themselves. Say they have 80 locations. They're not an Airspring customer today. He's saying, what would be the value proposition that he could use you know, to take to the customer on why you should use Ford Portal through right. Airspring? Well, it, it, it's a great question, but it, 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 it's, um, it, it's a tough one to answer because the, if I was a Fortinet person putting on my Fortinet hat for Rocky, I'll say, 
Um, that's our account man. That's the person who takes care of me at Fortinet. Um, the 40 portal, if they're already using manager and analyzer and their engineers are, the portal will be great for their non-technical staff to look at things. I mean, that's just a given that it's a, you know, if I wanted to go look at the statistics I was showing you in SD-WAN and, and 40 analyzer, I'm clicking about 20 different buttons to create a report and bring it up and look at it, where the portal's giving you that in real time, you know, like that. From an AirSpring point of view, we don't really, we take care of our own FortiGates. So, I mean, they already have all that and they're set up there. It kind of puts me in a weird position in the sense that I only offer this to my end users, you know, but as an overall Fortinet person, I'd have to say the advantages would be more right up top for more non-technical people, CFOs, because these reports, some of them are written, written some of the assessment reports they offer are written based for financial people, not for um, not for the uh, technical person like me. But that's if they had the analyzer, they'd get that anyway. It's just they'd have to go do it, you know. But that's a great mm -hmm. question. It, it, it poses the fact that we don't really, you know, I don't think we're, we're, I'm not allowed to offer the 40 portal to somebody else who already has 40 gates, 40 analyzer, and 40 manager themselves. You yeah, know, well, we, and then we don't charge for it with our Fortinet for customers, right, Chuck? No, so, no, but, all, our, but, all our portals are always uh, no charge. But also, would it be just even the issue of, are they looking for a managed service? Do they need help? Um, you know, we have people, we have customers that come to us with existing gear, but yet we still win those accounts True. by providing True. that managed services. So what, what could we, is there a further additional guidance we could give to well, John? Be all, by all means, if they have a channel manager, get a hold of them and, and get one of our solution engineers on there to see exactly how much they have, what they have, are they happy or not? You know, those type of things, you know, normal business sense there. Um, because we have we have two or three customers, well, two or four, two large customers now that have come over to us as existing Fortinet shops, and you know they uh, came under our I don't want to want to call our wing for lack of better terms, but yeah, that would be the best thing to do. Okay, All that's right. a great question, though. 